Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Corbin. You may know me from Peloton, but I also live with a thyroid condition and have recently learned that may put me at a higher risk for developing other conditions like thyroid eye disease or TED, which is a separate but related autoimmune condition that requires separate care. Naturally, I have lots of questions. For that reason, today I'm talking with Dr. Gary Lelly, an oculoplastic surgeon at Weill Cornell Medical Center and thyroid eye disease or TED eye specialist. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thanks for having me here. I'm I know, excited what a to, treat. I'm excited to dig in and yes. learn more about TED or share about TED. Right? Well, let's get into it. Dr. Lelly has agreed to answer the questions I have as I try to get a better understanding of the risk factors, signs, and symptoms of TED, what to watch out for, how to monitor my eyes, and where to go for help. So, Dr. Lelly, shall we get started? Let's do it. But first, you have to call me Gary. No more Dr. Lelly for the rest of this uh, this coffee side chat. Is Gare Bear out of the question? Let's see how the conversation goes. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep it with Gary. All right, Gary. So first question. Yeah. It's a basic but a prevalent one, right? What is thyroid eye disease or TED? Right, so it's an autoimmune condition. It's a condition where the body is attacking its own tissues. Mm -hmm. So um, in this case, it's attacking the tissues around the eyes. And so we wind up with swelling of the muscles back behind the eyes, the mm -hmm. fat behind the eyes even the eyelids and the facial structures. And patients wind up having a lot of sequelae from, from, from that autoimmune condition. It's really inflammation that's gone wrong. And, and that's what it is. We're gonna get into more stuff, so I'll save it for later. So what causes it? Yeah, so, so it's caused because the body's immune system is acting inappropriately. And one of the rude. really- It's so rude. Rude. <laughs> one of the really cool nerdy things is we've learned a ton over the past 15 years. Mm -hmm. In particular, we're, we've learned that there are specific markers that are attacked back behind the eyes, and that's where the body is sort of hitting to create that inflammation. Oh, so to create interesting. that swelling. Yeah, and how does TED develop? Can it be pretty gradual? So it can. It can be gradual or it can be, like you said, chaotic, where it's really aggressive. And over a period of weeks to months, a patient goes from perfectly normal to a disaster in mm -hmm. terms of the way their eyes appear and, and the, the, and the, way, the, the symptoms that they're having. Um, so it's very heterogeneous is, is the word we like to use in medicine. Basically mm -hmm. presents a ton of different ways. Yeah, yeah. When things are gradual, it's so hard to keep up with what's normal anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. So who's at risk for developing TED? Right. Obviously, um, I know I am through yeah. this thyroid disease journey, but who else is at risk? Graves disease patients are the ones that are most at risk. Graves disease, is, it causes hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. um, and up to half of patients with Graves disease can develop thyroid eye disease or TED. Um, but they're two separate disease processes. They have separate uh, mechanisms that, that cause them. And so because of that, a patient like yourself who has Hashimoto's could develop this as well, or a patient who has normal thyroid levels could still develop TED. The other thing that's uh, interesting is it affects women about five times more commonly than men hmm. and smokers. So, I mean, I know you're a health nut, yeah. but smokers have about an eight, time, eight times increased risk of developing TED and also having really bad TED. Interesting. Why are those living with one autoimmune condition at a higher risk for developing another, like TED? Patients with an autoimmune problem mm -hmm. are at more risk for other autoimmune problems. For instance, a patient with diabetes is, is more at risk to get rheumatoid arthritis. Patient right. with Graves' disease uh, is more at risk to get something called myasthenia gravis, a condition that causes weakness in muscles. So, mm. um, so when you have an autoimmune condition, you do have to know that there's a chance you're going to get you, you need to be at least telling your primary doctor that there's, you know, that I've got this and keep an eye on me for other stuff. Yeah, being your own advocate. Totally. Yeah. 100%. So what are the signs and symptoms of TED? Sure. Would um, I know that I have it? Uh, mo most people would, but like we said, it can be subtle. Yeah. Um, so um, the inflammation that happens, we were talking about how the muscles and the fat behind the eyes swell. Mm -hmm. That causes the eyes to actually push out of the eye socket. So they That's bulge. where the bulging. So you've probably seen pictures of, of it's kind of bulging eyes. Yeah. The same problem happens to the eyelids. So the upper and lower eyelids kind of retract or pull away. And you see the white around the eye, which, which is the most common thing we'll see. 
we'll see eyelids. Interesting. That, upper okay. eyelids that'll kind of pull up and, and look to make the eye look too big. And when that when those types of things happen, the eye's exposed to too much air, it doesn't yeah. close well, it gets really dry, red, painful, irritated, all these types of symptoms that happen. And that that might be the way the patient figures it out. But like I said, it could also be that the the area around the eyes swells and they notice that in pictures they look different. They look puffy, they look swollen. It's mm. not the same lids that they had six months ago. Yeah. Um, and so that can be the way they present. In its worst form, they can present with vision loss. So if the muscles that are back behind the eye swell too much and yeah. push on the nerve that transmits the vision back to the brain, then they can lose vision. And they might actually notice decrease in color vision or decrease in peripheral vision. That's a pretty serious one. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, thankfully about three to 5%, but the bad side of it. Right. And I mean, hopefully through these conversations and all of us becoming more aware because of all of the work that you're doing, right? It's like, hopefully we can get ahead of that. We're getting better. Is, I yeah. mean, you know, over the past few years, we've done a much better job with education on TED, but yeah. we've got a lot of work to do. That's why we're here. Yeah. I mean, here's hoping, but so if I was experiencing symptoms, when should I go see a doctor? As soon as you notice a symptom, you should see a doc. I mean, I would I would actually say if you're a patient who has a thyroid condition, if mm -hmm. you have Graves, if you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's, yeah. um, you should get a check. Get a check with a doctor who knows about TED so that they can just do a quick assessment and make sure you don't have even the most subtle sign. Yeah. Um, many patients, though, will figure out they have something going on and then they'll present themselves. But the key there would be don't wait. You know, mm -hmm. if you notice a sign or a symptom, if your eyes are red, if they're irritated, um, if you have pain, mm -hmm. some of the times because it's inflammation behind the eye, patients just say, you know what, I'm just aware my eyes there. It just, just feels funny. It just, I'm just aware it's there. So what kind of doctor should someone see if they suspect that they have TED or they simply need to manage their TED? Right. Well, the good news is it's the same type of doctor we either love way. That. We'll keep it simple. Yes. Simplicity um, is welcome. And now I'll make it a little more complex. <laughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> who uh, needs and, simplicity? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so either an oculoplastic specialist, that's a specialty. Can you say that three times fast? Probably not, <laughs> <laughs> but that's someone like me. Yeah. Uh, so that's somebody who, uh, uh, is an ophthalmologist and specializes in TED. Okay. There's other types of specialty ophthalmologists that also will take care of TED. Mm -hmm. Some general ophthalmologists have an interest yeah. um, and also neuro ophthalmologists. So those are pa uh, physicians who either are trained through neurology or ophthalmology. So mm -hmm. just to sum it up, sort of oculoplastics, okay. neuro ophthalmology, general ophthalmology in some instances, but it's the same doc for either one. If you, if you think you have TED, if you have a reason you think you might have TED, or if you're trying to figure out the best way to, fi to fix, manage it, those are the docs. What should I do if I'm not sure I'm getting the answers I need from the first doctor I see? That's common, honestly. You know, and, and actually with TED, we've we found it to be even more common. So mm -hmm. patients sometimes struggle to get the right diagnosis. It, it is really important to see somebody in oculoplastics or neuro-ophthalmology because yeah. they're going to be really equipped to diagnose your TED. But there are a lot of studies that show patients sometimes take three, four, five different doctor visits to actually get a diagnosis of TED. And it can take upwards of a couple years in some instances. So Interesting. as soon as you get that suspicion that, boy, I, I'm not sure that I'm getting what I need, either it's explanation or it's I'm not sure the diagnosis is right, just get a second opinion. And do you think that's because it's hard to get the right vocabulary to describe it or the symptoms develop more by that time so it's easier to describe it? That's fair. Um, I, I actually think it's because it presents in so many different ways yeah. that if you're not someone who sees it all the time, you might kind of get tricked down a pathway that's much more common for you, like a dry eye or an allergy mm. that a doctor sees like all day long. And so the patient comes in with red eyes, but they also, their eyelids are a little wide and they just say it's allergy or it's dryness. Right. And it's because, wrong. That's not right. Because, right. They, you know what I mean? So, um, so I think it's that. I would also, you know, just say that there is a website people can go to um, oh, for, for folks who are kind of listening to this to, to understand where to go to find a doc who mm -hmm. takes care of TED. It's, it's focusonted.com. And you can put your zip code in. You'll get folks who are, are vetted TED specialists 
by proximity to where you where you live. Oh, great. I love when more knowledgeable people than I can do the vetting for me. <laughs> well, I'd actually, I actually, I think it's just a list. It's probably a list of people who say I can take care of TED. I mean, but it, they, they are people who can, who can manage it. Okay. Fabulous. All right. So in a similar vein, but slightly different, but you know, something that we all deal with post-diagnosis, but what advice do you, what advice would you share to help with the mental health side of the equation? How do patients keep that positive mindset when dealing with a chronic condition, as we all know, can be just yeah, it's like, so it's a, draining. It's a weight, right? Mm -hmm. um, so especially with TED, you know, I, let me paint a picture. The most common patient is going to be a 40-year-old a woman um, who has a change in not only the function of her eyes, but the appearance. And mm. so there is a high level of anxiety and depression that goes along with the diagnosis of TED. Yeah. There's a study that actually shows that a new diagnosis of moderate to severe TED has the same levels of anxiety and depression score as a patient who has a new diagnosis of cancer. And so you just imagine you've got this 40 year old woman doing whatever they do, working, having a great life. And all of a sudden over a period of weeks to months, they look like an entirely different person. Yeah. So it's it's a big deal. And frankly, and, and you and I both know we don't have enough mental health help in this country, mm -hmm. but it's important to not only seek mental health help if you need it, and you can start with your TED specialist to try to get referrals or your primary care doctor, but also to have a good support network, right? Friends and family, their support groups for TED patients, yeah. um, and, then, and then build a really good care team around you because it's not going to just be an oculoplastics person or a neuro-ophthalmologist. You need an endocrinologist, you know? You need, you need a primary care doctor. You might even need a surgeon if your thyroid has to come out. So there's lots right. of different, you know, folks. But build that, build that team, and and I think those are some of the most important parts of it. But it's a really important question you asked. Yeah, and I guess circling back, it we have to remember that it might not be the first doctor we see that creates that team. We have to find what works best for us, yep. and you know, it might take a minute, which is never welcomed mentally to think that we have to wait. But right. totally you know, agree. to find the right people, I think it's worth the wait. Yeah. And it's a chronic condition. So it's worth it because you're going to have it for a long period of time, if not life. And it's right. manageable. I don't want to make it sound like this is like not manageable. It yeah. just means you, you're going to need to see a doctor maybe every year and get yeah. that thyroid checked, you know, and that's your endocrinologist. And so find one you like because you're going to be doing it for a long time. You know? Right. We were speaking about my endocrinologist and you know, I, I'd be happy to have her over for dinner. She's lovely. I, the visits aren't stressful. She gives me all the information I need. And then some she's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it was the right fit, but with, I was lucky to find that early in my endocrinologist journey, but I didn't find it in my diagnosis journey. So, you know, it's yeah. a little give and take, and yeah. it definitely takes a little bit of patience, which is harder when you're in the midst of it all. But right. Right. Yeah. And the diagnosis can be hard for, for Hashimoto's too, you know, yeah. so for sure. Yeah. Do you have a personal mantra that gets you through the day? Like when you're feeling low, do oh, you have, so an example, one mantra that I live by is treat your body like it belongs to someone you love. I don't know if you have a personal one yeah. or maybe you're developing your mantra. Yeah, that's fair. Um, maybe I, you have more than one. I, I, I would say I generally think about my kids. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I just, anything I can do to make their life better is, yeah. uh, it, you know, and that'll take me right out of it. And, and then also make me smile. Sometimes I just flip on my phone and just like, you know, see what, what Apple's decided to feed me that day. And like an old video of one of them and I'm good I to go. I love the recaps. I love Aren't the, they good? this yeah. day, 10 years ago photo that yeah. I forgot existed yeah. in yeah. the ether. It's yeah. in the cloud, wherever it is. And yeah. when it blesses me with its presence, most of the time. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Lelly. This has been so helpful and it's been giving me an idea of what to look for, who to see, if I notice any changes in my eyes and how to find the right doctor. And I hope that this discussion helps others who are listening as well. Thanks, Hannah. It was great to be with you. What a treat. Thank you, Gary.